So I've started the recording and essentially the rationale for that is so we we do post the recordings on our uh, participate Wood Buffalo web page for the Draper project. And the reason we do that is in case anybody would like to um, would like to watch this later if they can make it this evening. They could go online and watch this uh, presentation and get maybe get some answers to their questions and hear about what's happening in Draper. So just for your awareness. And also, I would just like to humbly acknowledge that uh, um, we are running this meeting virtually, but we are on Treaty 8 territory, which is the traditional lands of the Cree and the Dene and the unceded territory of the Métis people. And I'm grateful to be here this evening, and I'm grateful to have you all here joining me this evening. And if there's anybody from another treaty area, we welcome you as well, and we're also grateful to have you. Thank you very much. OK, so tonight we are here for our, our Draper community engagements, and I'm going to just share my screen because I'm sure you're probably tired of looking at me already, and I can't say I blame you. Um, just going to share some slides here just to give a bit of a uh, something nicer to look at besides myself. Okay. All right, so can everyone hear me and can you see my presentation slide? Can somebody just let me know, please? Yes, I do. Okay, yes, perfect. Do. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so um, in case you aren't aware, we're having a session. Tonight's session is virtual, but um, you're also welcome to join us on Wednesday evening for an in-person session, which is going to be at Jubilee Center on the first floor. And the time for the event is the same six until, uh, I guess until we've uh, had enough conversation that we are ready to go home. Um, but uh, we're sort of booked until about eight o'clock. So sometimes these events take a couple hours and sometimes a little bit less or a little bit longer. And we do have a bit of an agenda this evening or more like discussion topics. And the goal is to just kind of give you all um, just a high level update about what's happening in Draper, some of the things that are uh, related to your community and also some other things that are sort of broader outside the community that you might be interested in knowing about. So for example, boards and committees, um, the Christmas function coming up soon. We've got a few construction updates for the area. Gonna talk a little bit about the slope stability monitoring program. Um, the Draper entrance sign for the community, um, an upcoming engagement for trail feasibility. Um, we did meet a few times about the MDP, so I just wanted to sort of touch on that a little bit and give you an update. And then um, for the in-person session, we're actually going to get council chamber opened up for that evening so you can have a look around at the newly renovated chamber and some of the indigenous artwork that's in the chamber. And then we've also launched a uh, an engagement feedback survey which is um, basically focused on these sessions that we've been holding. So I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. And uh, yeah, let's get let's get started here. So the first thing I wanted to share is that um, the municipality has a, a number of boards and committees. I think there's about 15 of them and um, there's a recruitment period going on and this is open to basically anyone in the region. And you can actually join a committee and help, um, I guess, give impact or give input rather to some of the decisions that are made uh, on a, a number of different sort of issues and items. Everything from public art to um, the library to the um, Combative Sports Commission, I, I can't remember the name of it exactly, to uh, Subdivision and Development Appeal Board, all sorts of things you could get involved in. Now, um, if you want to know more about the specifics, I encourage you to go over to rmwb.ca slash boards and the the um, I guess the deadline to apply is actually the 28th, which is coming up pretty soon, but I just wanted to let you know um, in case this is something you might be interested in. It's a really good opportunity to get involved. Okay, and if I forgot to also mention if you have any questions as I'm going through some of this information, do feel free to just jump in. You can raise your hand. You can just hop on the microphone and interject if you have a question or you want to add some information to the conversation. OK, so there we go. Oh, and it is almost that season. Um, Christmas is pretty close. Um, so just wanted to let you know that here's some information about the upcoming um, annual Draper Residence Christmas celebration coming up on December 8th. 
It's going to be at the Legion. Um, and we do ask that you uh, contact Corley um, to RSVP for that event by December 1st. And her email is in on the slide. And I'll ask my colleague Cassandra, who's helping support in the background, to maybe pop that email in the chat for you as well to make it a little easier for you. And um, yeah, we do encourage you to get in touch with Corley, and I hope you have a great time at this uh, celebration. Hey, so it's hard not to live in Draper and not notice that there is some uh, flood mitigation construction happening. Oh yes, and before I get into that, as Corley notes, the information will also be in the rural newsletter, which will be coming out uh, early November. Anyways, um, back to Reach 11. Uh, that is something that most residents have to drive through entering the entering the community. So I just wanted to kind of give a really quick update and let you know that it is still an active construction site, but they are expecting to wind down pretty soon um, just for the winter. So you can expect in the coming weeks, uh, late October, early November, that construction will be kind of shutting its doors for the winter and then uh, they'll be reopening in the spring. Expected completion is fall 2023, and essentially the uh, detour that they have in place right now will remain the same. So um, the only, I guess, thing you might notice is that the hall roads will be uh, blocked off as part of the shutdown. So you probably won't have those people with the signs uh, waving you through or stopping you at that intersection. And I just also want to plug a really important resource, which is the uh, construction uh, web page. If you haven't been on that web page, it's a great resource, rmwb.ca slash construction. And once you go onto that web page, there's a few buttons you can kind of go on to, and you can actually select by neighborhood or community. So there is a button specifically for Draper, and you can click on that and find about some of the construction that's happening, just like Reach 11. Alrighty. Does anybody have any questions? I'm kind of uh, going a little bit quickly here. I don't want to interrupt anyone if you want to jump in if you have any questions. We do have some of our friends from the engineering team here tonight. And if you do have some more specific questions about some of these um, engineering related projects, they're here to help answer your questions. I am not an engineer. I'm just a public engagement guy. But um, we do have our friends from engineering here in case there's something more specific you want to know or ask about. OK, so a few other construction things happening is um, uh, Draper Road phase two. Um, apparently the work on that is substantially complete, which is basically saying it's pretty close to done and they're just uh, working on deficiency. So any little areas that they need to kind of clean up here and there, that's where they're at with phase two of the project. Um, I'm not sure if phase two means the rest of the road. So maybe Joseph, if you're on the, if you can hear me back there, maybe you could tell us as phase two, does this mean that Draper Road work is now going to be complete or is there another phase after this? If that's, I'm not sure if that's Joseph's project or perhaps Mazar, if you have any information on that, that would be really nice. And I see Mazar, you have your hand up. Yeah, I think about that. Yeah. So basically, the term substantially completed, <clears throat> it really means that the project has already completed, which is phase two is yeah. completed. Now, deficiencies, sorry, when you say substantially completed, also it means that you can use the road. That's what it means. The public can already oh, travel okay. over the road, no issue. However, however, there are some deficiency, I would say. I don't know the deficiencies, but I know that sometimes because of the weather or any other factors, they cannot put striping on the road or signage or anything like that. Yeah. Most likely, these are the deficiencies after you put the surface, the final surface lift. These are the deficiencies that will be left. But, uh, but you know, typically the road is useful, use, uh, usable. And no issue with that because substantially completed, you can the public can use it. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. And, and okay, so we also have a little bit of construction happening on Riverbend Close and Garden Lane. Um, construction for Riverbend Close started in uh, in the summer, and the first lift of asphalt is complete. And now they're going to be. You've probably noticed some bulldozers out there doing some ditch work. Um, and that road is expected to be complete in September 2023 along with Garden Lane. 
um, that will, construction on that road was supposed to start this year, but they actually bumped it to spring of next year for um, uh, various reasons. So you'll see some folks starting to do the little construction work on Garden Lane in the spring, and that is also expected to be finished at the end of the construction season. So, um, and that's just a little update on those ones. Here's some really good news. This is fun. I really wanted to share with you. So. Um, the Sarah Holden dog park is now open. I'm not sure if you've um, ventured off in that direction. It does look like a big construction zone still, but there are roads ways to get through there. And as you can see on the presentation slide here, there's a little picture. Um, if you follow the sign to the right out towards the Tom Weber Park and Boat Launch, you can actually reach the Sarah Holden dog park, which is pretty amazing. Um, there are some areas fenced off and that's just because they're doing some seeding in the area and next spring when the grass takes place and they're going to probably open that right up so that the whole park is open. Um, yeah, and it's really, really quite beautiful. Um, so outside and kind of beside that, that dog park is Reach 11 construction um, and they're sort of working together a little bit, but the dog park is open and ready for business. It just looks like a construction zone. Just follow the signs and drive along the trail slowly, watching out for any uh, construction traffic in the way, and you can enjoy the park. And I have some nice photos I'm going to share with you right now. So this is an aerial view of what the park looked like in about August. So it's probably changed a little bit since then, but essentially you can see on the left side, there's some construction work for Reach 11, but on the right, there's the new dog park, which is actually, from what I understand, bigger than it was previously. And it's got a really nice trail system in there, and it's pretty gorgeous. I was down there the other day, and it's already getting some good use by the community. But if you haven't been down there yet, I encourage you to go down there. And here's some nice signs. You'll see some place making signs and wayfinding signs you'll see down there. All right. Bazaar, do you still have your hand up from before? Or did you want to add something? I want to I want to ask you actually the location of the park. Is that by the uh, horse pasture park there? Yeah, this is on uh, this is, I guess, on Draper Road. I'll just go back. Across from the uh, Reach 11, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. To the back, like towards yeah. uh, the north. Yes. Okay. I guess it's kind. Of, I guess it's kind of the northeast. I get my directions get a little bit turned around. But as you're driving into Draper, there's a there's a, a detour as you're entering the community, and you can turn left. Well, I guess what it depends what direction you're going, but you go kind of south towards the river, and you'll see um, some signage directing you towards the park. Thank you. Okay, and then. Um, so as we've been out in Draper a few times, people have been asking about slope stability. Um, there is a slope stability monitoring program happening, and this is a region wide program, not necessarily targeted for Draper, though there is some monitoring going to happen in Draper. Um, and so where we are now, um, the engineering team has gone out with a consultant and assessed the area to find uh, I guess the good locations to put some slope monitoring instrumentation. And then uh, the consultant has put together a bit of a plan of where those could go and, and be effective for reading slope stability and monitor those areas. Um, and so the plan is to, with uh, the RMWB now and just reviewing that to make sure everything is OK. And um, after that plan is approved, there'll be you can expect that they'll be going out into the communities to install instrumentation um, and my understanding is that residents will be notified before any engineering team or consultant go on to any uh, private property um, my question i guess maybe mazar i'm not sure if you uh, have any information on this but as we get closer to winter would you expect that any of those instrumentation would be installed in the winter or as the as the ground freezes up do you think that would be more towards the springtime I would say the springtime <clears throat> because okay. you need to give yeah the springtime. But we have already met with the consultant uh, last week, you know, to figure out how many instrumentations we need. Because believe it or not, number of instru instrumentations dictates the total cost of the project. Okay. And, uh, as you know, consultants they want to 
add more than what you think. <laughs> right. So we have been negotiating with them, and they're supposed to come with the with another um, basic round of uh, basically uh, uh, instrumentation locations. Okay. And once we look at that and we are comfortable with the cost, we can just go ahead and proceed. Say that's fine. We are comfortable. But okay. we are still in that negotiation stage. Yeah. But at least they have a plan. Uh, they already, uh, you know, like you mentioned, they already figured out plan one, stage one, which is the study. They already done that, and they, and they in July, like you mentioned, they went and inspected, you know, the sites, all the uh, sites, and uh, specifically Draper, <clears throat> because Draper is the most uh, intense location because you have uh, slope stability issues, you know, uh, along st uh, along the hill there. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, but I, I expect like uh, you know spring will they will start the installation. They look okay. The installation. Okay, and then uh, I guess uh, my understanding from what I've heard speaking from your team is that the instruments will go in the ground and they will just stay there for a number of years. So that's, uh, that's not like we'll have people going into people's backyards on a regular basis. They're just going to install the instrumentation and then monitor those uh, remotely. That's correct. They monitor yeah. remotely and they uh, can get the result the results the same way. And uh, we can have the results also the same way. OK, that's great. Thank you. Yo. Does anyone have any questions about the slope stability monitoring program? OK, and hearing nothing so far, I'm going to move to the next uh, topic, which is the uh, Draper community entrance sign. So um, some some of you may have heard uh, or hopefully you participated. Uh, there was an engagement that was held from August 10th to September 7th, and that was to uh, assess, um, I guess, the preferred location and an icon that would go on a community entrance sign for Draper. And so uh, that survey has closed and the findings are um, the location um, residents preferred is to um, have the sign before the entrance of Draper. And so because of that, because Reach 11 is under construction at the moment, uh, the sign isn't anticipated to actually be installed in the community until about 2024. But um, you will be seeing that in the, I guess, um, coming down the road. Um, and the icon selected by the community was a train icon. So um, yeah, that's a nice little, uh, um, I guess good news story for the community that you'll be seeing come soon. And if you're interested in learning more about this, we actually have a what we heard report posted on our, our public engagement page, which uh, Cassandra has just shared the link in the uh, chat box there. And um, for all of our public engagements, we like to report back and tell the community what we heard from them. And so you'll 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 have a chance to read that what we heard report and find out what we did and what what your community was saying about that project. And um, we do that for most of our projects on the participate project page in case you're interested. OK, and so before I keep motoring through, does anyone have any questions? Yes, Mazar. Yeah, well, uh, I'm familiar with the sign. Uh, that they want to put out there, but is that where the uh, previous old signs, uh, you know, the, um, the hamlet of uh, uh, the property of Draper, or uh, you are entering Draper? There was a sign like that before. Yeah, there, there is actually there's one out there right now which has lettering on it, <clears throat> and um, Coralie might even be able to speak to this a little bit better than I can. But I believe they're going to keep both signs the community entrance sign which will be built in 2024 and also keeping the community sign where they can put lettering on it and then oftentimes our roads team has some uh, electronic signage that they'll put out in the area too to promote projects such as this public engagement that we're at tonight so there's going to be a few signs in that area um, i don't think there's a sign located in that either place right now where they where they're proposing to put the new sign yeah, the new sign that's correlated here, the new sign is not going in the location of the old sign right. before that. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Corley. Any other questions? 
Oh, I see somebody maybe arriving. It's going to admit our next guest. <clears throat> All right, welcome to the uh, welcome to the event, Jim. I can hear a little bit of uh, something coming from your from you over there, Jim. I wonder if you could mute your mute your phone or your computer. Okay, a little bit of noise on our end, Jim, here, so I'm just going to, oh, there we go. Now you're muted. Thank you. Feel free to jump in on the microphone or in the chat room if you have any questions as we're going. We we're just uh, wrapping up a quick update here about the Draper entrance sign. So there was a community entrance sign. Um, there was an engagement held from August 10th to September 7th, and based on feedback from the community, the location will be before the entrance of Draper and the icon on that sign will be a train and you can get more information on our website. There's uh, a link in the chat and if you can't see that, we're happy to share that with you. It's also written in the slide presentation there, rmwb.ca slash participate. And there is a project page specific for Draper. OK. Moving right along, um, another upcoming engagement that's going to be, um, I've been talking about this at like one of the last, maybe the last two sessions we've had is the, uh, the trail feasibility study. So there is a consultant that has been hired. Um, their name is EDS Group, and they are expected to begin engagement in November. Um, and what they will be doing is um, looking at the conditions of the existing Draper Trail, basically that connects Sapri Creek with the OHV staging area at Tom Weber uh, boat launch. And uh, they're going to be looking at that to understand the needs of the trail from the perspective of various users, whether those are hikers, snowmobilers, OHV users, um, and just uh, figure out what the needs are for that trail and also maybe a vision for the future of what else could potentially be used for that trail. And um, so you can expect to hear um, some, I guess, communications out to the Draper community and residents out there to try and get feedback from the people who live there, OHB users and trail enthusiasts in the area, some user groups and community groups. So I'll be working uh, closely with Cora Lee and her team to make sure that information gets out to you so that you can participate in this engagement. And uh, again, we're expecting that to happen in November. Um, I know we've had lots of people asking about the Draper Trail and what's going on, what's happening with it. So I just want you to rest assured that um, administration is aware of the, uh, that you enjoy this trail and want to see it used and that many residents do use what portions are available. And so um, they're going to look at that and see what else can be done with the trail. Um, again, this is a, a feasibility study, so this right now is kind of the early ages to see what's possible. It's kind of like a, a dream stage, so to speak. Um, there are no plans at this point of what physically work would be done. That's a little bit further down the road, but just know that they're looking at what could the potential be for that trail. OK, does anyone have any questions about that? Questions, comments? No? OK. Yeah, oh, I see Mazar's got his hand up. Go ahead, Mazar. Sorry, I, I'm always curious about the projects. Uh, <clears throat> um, do you know what will happen to the existing trail? You know, on the, I would say the back, uh, the back side of the ditch, you know, toward the north, closer to the river. You know, there is an existing trail. When you drive in Draper, you see actually, actually people use, uh, use it. Do you know what will happen to the existing one? Well, um, I'm trying to understand if you're referring to the, it's a, basically an old railway bed from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So um, I don't I don't think they, uh, they know what they're going to do with it yet. I know that there are portions that are taken care of by the uh, snow drifters, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, I don't think they take care of all of that trail because there are some areas that are not really accessible. And so they're going to look at that to see what they need to do to make that usable 
and uh, in a multi-use, multi-purpose kind of way. So it's not just for one thing per se, maybe it's for a year round, uh, perhaps. It, it really sort of depends on the feedback that is um, that residents give when they're in the uh, engagement phase. I'm just letting someone else in here. Mazar, I hope that helps answer your question. Yes, that's fine. Thank okay. you. Okay. And so we have a new guest that has just joined us. Um, just to let you know where we're at, we we're just talking about an upcoming um, feasibility study. So there will be an engagement in the Draper and Sapray Creek areas just to talk about the uh, Draper Trail, which is the former railway bed. And they're going to do a feasibility study to see what could be done with that. And those of you who are joining us late, I just want to let you know, A, that I'm recording this session. So if you want to go back and watch the video later, you can catch up on what you might have missed. Or your, I can go through the agenda after we've gone through the presentation and, and uh, share some updates about the other topics we discussed before you arrive. So feel free to jump in, sh uh, send a message in the chat, or just jump online and um, you can talk to us through the microphone. Okay, does anyone have any questions about this trail feasibility study? Any other questions? Okay, I'm just going to keep moving along here. Okay, so the municipal development plan. So um, for those of you who have been coming out to these uh, sessions, we've been holding regular engagements in Draper since about April. We try to aim for about once a month, and there were a couple sessions that were specifically targeted to the municipal development plan or the MDP. And I just wanted to let you know that um, the administration received a lot of feedback on that, so they're currently just reviewing feedback, not just from the Draper survey we did, which was specifically targeted at um, Draper and Draper residents, but just um, across the region. So this this plan is for the entire region from Fort Fitzgerald down to Conklin. So uh, the planning team really has a lot of work to do, and they're they're just going through all the feedback that they heard from the phase three engagements. But the next steps um, are basically to finalize the draft plan um, and then they're going to present that to council for their consideration because this is something that council needs to adopt and approve. And the timelines for that are, um, we don't have the timelines for that available just yet, but we will be sharing that information publicly when it becomes available. So I just wanted to let you know that your feedback was heard and that the planning team is listening and uh, making edits as, as uh, they see as a fit, and then uh, they will be moving forward with that plan. So we'll keep you in the loop as we hear. Any questions about the MDP? Okay, and hearing none, I'm just going to keep moving forward. Okay, so. A couple of upcoming engagements that you'll be hearing about. I did touch on this earlier, the, the trail fe feasibility study. Also, we're going to be looking at doing an outdoor exercise equipment engagement just to um, gauge residents' feedback in sort of the rural areas to see what they feel about having some outdoor exercise equipment out in the community and what that might look like. So early stages of that, but uh, if you're ever in Fort McMurray around sort of the um, the Birchwood Trails, for example, there's some exercise equipment in that area, and that's is a little bit of a idea of what that this engagement might look like, or at least the topic of that engagement. And they're just going to reach out to some of the rural communities to see if that's something that they would like to have out there. So um, you can uh, check that out at rmwb.ca/participate when that is posted, but I encourage you to go there anyways, because we always have several engagements going on at any given time. And that uh, rmwb.ca slash participate page actually just shows a list of all the different projects that you can share your feedback on. So it might not necessarily relate to Draper specifically. It might be a region wide type of engagement like the wayfinding engagement we just did recently, or it might be something more specific. Okay, and um, yes, there is a Draper engagement feedback survey. I don't think I've come to that slide just yet, but I will shortly and tell you a little bit more about that. Okay, so next. Um, 
like I said earlier, we're having two engagements this week. This is the virtual session, and then on Wednesday, we're having an in-person session at Jubilee on the first floor. And it just so happens that the session we're hosting is right beside council chamber out in the lobby area. So we thought it'd be a great idea to open up council chamber. And for those who haven't seen the newly renovated chamber, we're going to welcome you to go in and have a look. And also, um, if you didn't know, the new council chamber actually has really nice artwork in there, indigenous artwork in there done by local artist Fred McDonald. And I encourage you to uh, go and take a look at that. And if uh, even if you aren't interested in hearing me talk again on Wednesday, I encourage you to come out and just check out the artwork in the new council chamber. It's quite nice. So um, Cassandra has just shared a PDF in the chat room, and that talks a little bit more about the artist and the artworks that are in council chamber. And um, that's a really nice uh, a step towards reconciliation as part of our organization's plan for reconciliation. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, any questions, comments? Oh, OK, hearing done, keep it moving forward. Like I mentioned earlier, um, our project page for, uh, or sorry, our web page for participation and public engagement is rmwb.ca slash participate. And when you go there, you'll see a page like this and it'll show underneath a few icons of different active projects. And as you can see, there's a Draper projects one down in the bottom right. Um, and when you click on that icon for the Draper projects, you'll see a project page that looks like this. And I encourage you to, to visit this project page regularly because we make updates pretty often. And what we do is we share resources like information about our event tonight, for example, but also um, important documents, uh, links. Uh, we're going to put the recording of this video on that page as well. So um, yeah, I encourage you to keep uh, connected with that page. And here we go, engagement feedback survey. So we've been doing these regular sessions since April, and we just like to get your feedback on how things are going. So what do you like about the meetings? Uh, what topics do you want to talk about? Um, do you like the locations and the format? Um, have you found them to be helpful and informative? These are the kinds of questions we're hoping to ask. How often do you want to meet with us and um, learn about things that are happening and engage? We encourage you to um, take that survey. It's on the participate page that I just shared the link with earlier, or at least showed you the, the screenshot of it earlier. And Cassandra's going to send you the link in the chat room. So if you want to click on that and have a look at that page or if you have any issues and you want to just reach out to us, you can email us at this email that I'm going to write in the chat room as well. You can reach out to our team at that email at any time, and we're happy to answer your questions or help you find resources that you're looking for. And that survey is going to be open until November 14th, and we hope to hear your feedback because we'd like to know how we're doing and if there's anything we can improve to make these sessions even more valuable for you. And uh, speaking of the next sessions, like I said, we do have an in-person session on Wednesday. Um, it'll be basically the same information that I've shared with you this evening. Um, but after that, we don't have any other sessions planned just yet. But once we hear your feedback in the survey and uh, get a little feedback from you, this will help us to uh, plan a little bit more effectively. OK, so I got a question here. Does it say that they will inspect the trail in November? What does a feasibility study mean? Those are great questions. So um, the consultant that we hired, EDS Group, they have actually already been out on the trail. So they wanted to do they wanted to get out there while the weather was still good and they could get out there before it gets frozen and snowy so that they could really get effectively see what's happening. So um, they have been out there and a feasibility study means to see what's pa. It's kind of like a possibility study. What's possible out there? What could we do? So there are a lot of different um, types of activities that we can do out in the rural areas. So for example, cycling, hiking, snowmobiling, uh, quads. 
there's even you know horses out there too um so it's really to see what kind of uses can we use out on that trail and um what what do we kind of hope for out in that trail so what's possible now and what do we hope for for the future and i guess that's really the sort of scope of a, the feasibility study i hope that answered your question i see do we have another hand up i think jim has his hand up go ahead jim Hi there. Um, question is, what's the timeline for the flood mitigation review for Draper affected properties? Been That's two and, a half years, and it's been two and a half years and we've we had nobody undertake a review. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great question too, Jim. Um, I know that in, I believe it was, uh, I want to say July. July was the last verbal update that was given to council and that was done by my director of um, public engagement and communications. Um, he did give an update stating that there have been they've been reaching out to the province to try and find out about funding options for recovery and flood mitigation. So those conversations are ongoing, and I believe we talked with some of you about that at the last session. Since that time, there really hasn't been any additional updates. Um, although I know that also in the council chamber when my director presented, they expected to hear back in October. So we're expecting and we're waiting to hear some information that we can share from you. Unfortunately, I don't have any additional information to share with you at this time. Okay, um, there's a council meeting tomorrow. They won't be discussing it there, will they? I don't think so, but let me check on the agenda. There is an agenda um, that you can see online. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen here for a moment and we can actually look at the agenda right now so in case you're not aware of the url have you been on the municipal website to check out council agendas to find this information out yes okay i just good. didn't look at morals that's all okay that's fine i'm just sharing it with the group in case uh, other people out there have not um are not aware of this link and let's see what's going on tomorrow. I apologize, my voice is a little hoarse. I'm going to share my screen again and show you the agenda right now. Okay. Okay, so can you see the agenda? I don't see anything about flood mitigation there. Nor there. So no, it's not on the agenda for tomorrow, unfortunately. And at this point, unfortunately, I don't have any other update on when that is coming forward again. I know it's frustrating. Okay. I know it's frustrating, but we will be sharing as soon as possible, as, well, as soon as we're able to. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, I have another question, Draper resident. Will any money be proposed in the 2023 budget for Draper trail repairs? Um, I don't personally know at this point. I haven't seen the proposed budget for 2023 yet, but what I can imagine is, is that they're going to do the study first, and based on that study, they'll figure out a plan or maybe a wish list of what they can do, and then administration would put a budget together to propose that for potentially the 2024 budget. But I don't think that would be... We wouldn't have that information in time for the 2023 budget, which is really just around the corner, and the feasibility study is going to take a little bit of time. So I hope that helps answer your question. Oh, I see Hi, Tony it's is. Corley. It's Corley. Hi, Corley. Um, I just want to let you know that um, there is an, uh, an an advertisement going in the rural newsletters with regards to the dates for the budget. So people will be able to see the dates and how they can watch budget towards the end of the month of November, early December. So thank you. Oh, okay, that's great. And the, actually, that's a good point. The council, the the link I sent earlier for council meetings, that is um, that will show where you can watch the actual budget meetings, and you'll be able to see the budget. Um, uh, I guess agenda and the proposed budget and you'll be able to actually see what that is. And I see Tony has posted proposed budget will be posted online November 9th or 10th, I believe.
for the 2023 season, will there be any budget consideration for temporary mitigation during the flood season? I know that um, the, the flood mitigation program is ongoing. So there's kind of this thing that's happening right now where permanent flood mitigation is being completed. And so uh, less temporary mitigation is uh, necessary. So as far as um, the flood mitigation for the Draper area, I am not aware of any. Um, my understanding is that Draper does not fall within the flood mitigation program. So I would assume that there is not any temporary flood mitigation planned for that area. The challenge is, is that the, the area is really mostly um, private property. So that creates um, a host of different challenges and considerations when thinking about temporary mitigation. And I hope that answers your question, but Jim, if you do want to uh, look further when that proposed budget is posted online in November 9 or 10, um, you can scroll through that and see numbers for different projects and get a clearer answer on whether or not there's any uh, budget consideration for temporary flood mitigation. I am not privy to that information beforehand, so I, I can't provide an answer to you for that other than what I just said earlier but you're most welcome to dig into that, those budget documents when they are released. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to ask? Okay, there are other private properties that were protected the past two seasons. So is there an actual criteria for temporary flood mitigation? That's a that's a good question. I'm going to um, call in on my engineering friends here to see if um, maybe they have a little bit more information about this question. Perhaps Mazar or Joseph, do you have any um, information about temporary flood mitigation or what the criteria might be. I know that there is a, a plan area for permanent flood mitigation and um, that essentially runs from McDonald Island around to waterways. So just on the, just basically up to reach 11. So that's my understanding of where all of the, um, the, the flood mitigation activities happen. As far as the temporary what does it say? Their two private properties were protected the past two seasons. Um, I don't actually know the information about that, but we can find out that for you. And I'll write this information down after. Um, Jim, if there's a contact information that you want to share with us, maybe um, you could email us at the participate email, or once we do find out information, we can post it on the Draper project page that we were showing you earlier, just in case you don't want to share your contact information. Just taking some notes in case you're wondering why I'm looking sideways. There was a suggestion of a grant program so owners could do their own. OK, good. So yes, please send your email and we'll look into that a little bit further. I know that um, one of the engineers, uh, she's not here tonight, but she might have a little bit more detail to help answer that question for you. Okay. Oh, I see Mazar has his hand up. Mazar, did you want to uh, share some? Share some information? You might be muted there. I don't know if you're talking, Mazar. Yeah, I wasn't muted, sorry. Okay, I think I'm go. aware of temporary flood mitigation within uh, the downtown area, but I'm not aware of anywhere else, you know, like where they use rubber, you know, filled with water, that kind of thing. We used it actually last time, last year, and so on. So I'm not familiar if there's anything to, uh, for Draper at this point. OK, but yes, we will look into that further for you, Jim. OK, so he says, I'm asking on behalf of a neighbor who is working 
They are asking how the drainage program offered to Grayling Terrace differs from Draper. Now, drainage program, would that be there's like um uh residential drainage program? I know that there's a few projects happening in town. Mazar, does that ring a bell to you? Yes. So the Grayling Terrace basically is a project where it's a project to uh, uh, redirect the drainage coming down the hill, you know, from uh, Grayling uh, Terrace Hill there, which is uh, directly, uh, I would say, north uh, east of uh, the community there. And the idea is to prevent the drainage uh, or the water, the runoff, to come down to the top of the slope there and then goes into the community, which this has been going on for years. And meanwhile, uh, engineering and uh, uh, we have been actually uh, using temporary, you know, mitigation, putting sandbags and, uh, you know, worms, that kind of thing at the top slope to prevent the water going into the community. So finally, we decided to go ahead and put a, temp a permanent measure where we are putting a berm, permanent berm, and within that berm, there would be like a channel, a reprap channel, and the water that comes from down from the uh, from the hill uh, would be really uh, uh, redirecting uh, redirecting the runoff to the east, like towards uh, say towards a uh, uh, sand uh, drive there. So and then uh, midway we we have a plan to put a stone pipe. So all the water come, that comes from this channel will be directed into a big manhole, and that manhole, basically a stone manhole, will be directing the runoff all the way to the east, crossing. Uh, crossing uh, Avisan Drive and going into that trail. If you, if you know there is a trail uh, close by the Avisan Drive there, and the water will be there uh, going into that big manhole there. And then uh, tying into the uh, storm system that we have, you know, there. And that's it. That's really the, uh, the intent of the project. It's basically to secure that uh, the, the houses there, they will not be uh, flooded again. Thank you. Does that help? Um, hi, Jim. I hope that is uh, helping to address your question a little bit. I know that uh, residential drainage is sort of a, a project that happens in lots of different areas around, and I think that the degree of drainage um, really differs from from location to location, and some some areas is a little bit more significant than others. And it sounds like Grayling is one of the areas that is a little bit more significant. But thank you for relaying that, relaying that back to them. Does anyone else have any questions or anything they'd like to add? OK, here we go. Why doesn't Draper have any banners like all the other rural communities? There are a dozen poles that would be suitable. Can someone look into putting some up, please? That's a great question. We can definitely look into that. I know um, I'm not familiar actually with any uh, poles out in the Draper community, but I know that uh, space is uh, sometimes a challenge. Um, but it, maybe that perhaps on the um, right of way it could be have some poles up there. But I will we'll definitely put this question into administration for you, and see what we can come back for a response. Again, if you don't want to share your contact information, we will be. Um, posting these uh, questions on our participate project page for Draper and just uh, a response and the question so you can kind of have a look in, a, in an anonymous way so you don't need to worry about sharing any convert or any, or any contact information rather. And there are a few questions up there already, um, so I do encourage you to visit that site when you can. Okay, so. I have gone through the or sorry, the presentation information. Uh, I know that a few of you did join late, so I could go back for those who want to have a have a, have a quick um, quick review through that. Otherwise, I don't have any new information. If you have some questions or things you want to talk about, um, we do have a few people from our engineering team here. If you have some questions related to those types of topics, 
um, and I can try and answer some questions myself. Otherwise, I will be taking notes and going back to get some information for you at a later date, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, so if anybody has any questions they'd like to ask, or if you want me to go back, please do chime in and I'm happy to do so. And uh, Jim says the recent paving is great, but the garbage and recycle bins have nowhere to sit but on the road out into the lane. I asked Pulse, but they said that it was built to standard but I don't think there was consideration for bins on the river side of the road, which is narrow. OK, that's a good question. Good comment. Is there anyone from the engineering team who might be able to speak to this a little bit more? Uh, <clears throat> could, uh, could the yes, caller mother. maybe, sorry. Sorry. Well, could the caller, no, elaborate, could the caller elaborate, elaborate a little bit about the question of the bins? OK, so there there this uh, Jim is noting that there is only about 13 inches of flat area for bins on the river side of the, the new road, Draper Road, and um, he's just wondering if there is any consideration for bins on the side of the river side of the road, which is fairly narrow. So basically, uh, the caller is uh, is basically saying that there is not much uh, uh, space between the road and the ditch. Is that correct? Right. And in the winter, the bins get hit by the grader almost weekly, and then they end up far into the ditch. So those bins are getting knocked and in, knocked into the ditch. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think that's a great point, Jim. Thank you for raising that. Um, basically, uh, I can raise that issue with uh, we can inspect uh, the uh, Draper on this issue and I can raise it to more into our design team, you know, including the consultant and so on, because obviously this issue will continue to be there if uh, there was no solution. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mazar, and thank you for raising that point, Jim. All right. Anyone else have a question or a comment they'd like to share? Sure. If you want to send photos to our participate email, I'm just writing them in the chat. I can uh, we can share that with the engineering team and um, then they can follow up on that for you. So Pulse, well, will, are, uh, Pulse will already sh also share photos if you send. There's a, um, a way of uh, sending photos online as well, but you're also welcome to just email us directly and we can share that with our engineering friends. Yes, Mazar, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh... I wonder if Kashif has an opinion on the such because he was involved with us, uh, you know, regarding the Draper Road and the ditch and all that. Uh, and this issue has not really been discussed actually during uh, the design uh, sessions that we had, you know, and so on. I don't know if Kashif is aware that this issue was discussed before. Okay, uh, thank you, Mazar Kashif Khan, Program Manager, uh, Engineering. Um, if uh, if the person asking the question can specify us a location, specific location, which house in front of which, I'm assuming there is uh, no uh, no space available, even 10 meters on north or 10 minutes, um, meters on east and 10 minutes, uh, meters on west of the road. So if we know a particular spot which is in question, we can definitely look uh, more. Uh, we can look uh, in detail and talk to environmental services that the trucks come to pick the garbage. We can also talk to them. Thank you. OK, it looks like Jim's going to upload some photos in a second here to share with us. Thank you. And if you could also just kind of let us know whereabouts that is along the road, that would help the engineering team a bit. 
just to identify the specific location. Yeah, that would be appreciated, uh, Will, um, because we know for sure that uh, we didn't have a whole lot of uh, right of way with, you know, and Draper. And, um, you know, the, you can tell like the ditches in some locations are very tight, very close to the road. I agree with, with Jim on that. So, but we need to know the exact location so we can just investigate it better. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Let's see who we have here. Okay. Well, we're just waiting for some photos to get uploaded. Did anyone else have any questions or would anyone like me to go back? I can, uh, I'll just uh, go back to the agenda and just highlight that really quick here. And then if anybody wants me to review anything from that, I can certainly do so. Okay, so hopefully you can see the agenda now. Um, if there is anything on here in particular you would like me to elaborate on, please let me know. I'm happy to do so. Checking my screen here to see if I'm missing any hands. Yes, we did talk about the Christmas party, so I can bring that slide up for you with some information. There is an RSVP. So um, looks like the party this year is going to be December 8th at the Legion. Uh, doors open at 530, Christmas dinner at 630, and please do email Coralie uh, to RSVP before December 1st and Corley mentioned earlier that there will be some information coming out in the rural newsletter which is due early November so if you don't get the email tonight you'll get that in the newsletter okay so some of the construction updates we talked about were the road up, um, upgrades and some some work there, but also we talked a little bit about the uh, the dog park. If you haven't been to the Sarah Holden dog park, the sort of new and improved version, um, I definitely encourage you to go down there. Even if you don't have a dog, it's pretty beautiful out there. And yes, thank you for the question, Draper residents. Happy to happy to share information for you. Okay, <clears throat> and Jim, I don't see any photos being uploaded here to the chat. You're also welcome to email them to our participate email. Oops. And any sort of description you might have about the specific particular location. Oh, okay, slow connection. All right, I'll just be patient and I'll stop nagging. <laughs> um, for those of you who might have missed, we did talk a little bit about the Draper entrance sign. So the engagement for that wrapped up in September and there will be a sign built uh, just before the entrance of Draper in 2024. The uh, icon selected by the community was a train. What else? Uh, we talked a little bit about boards and committees. If you are interested in participating in a board or committee, uh, October 28th is the deadline. And yeah, the trail feasibility study. We do anticipate that'll be coming out very soon. So I'm thinking early November to mid November, you'll start seeing a little bit of information about that coming out to um, invite you to participate and share your feedback. And that is essentially all the information and updates I have to share. Um, does anyone have any? Oh, here we go. Here's a new question. Will the new Draper entrance sign have a message board on it or an electronic message board? Actually, my understanding is it will not. So if you've been to some of the other communities and seen their entrance signs, like for example, Anzac, um, where else? Um, 
trying to remember Conklin. That's a little bit far out of town. It's they're going to be in, in line with what our current uh, community entrance signs are. Um, I know that there is a message board existing on the way into Draper. Um, not sure if the plans are to keep that still or not. Maybe Coralie, do you have any information on whether or not they'd like to still keep that sign in addition to the new sign? Hi, it's Coralie here. Um, at this point, I believe there's engagement information and, and residents were asked if they would like to have both signs. So we are working on that right now. Um, the message board will stay until the Draper entrance sign um, is is figured out and we know what's going on there. Um, and then we'll use electronic signs to do different things, obviously for, for residents, but um, the entrance sign is very similar to what would be uh, your Conklin, John V, Beacon Hill, any of those community placemaking signs. And the, uh, I guess the designated picture will was a train, correct? Yes, that was the that was the icon chosen. I'm just going to pull up a, a um, web page here to see if I can actually show you what that sign would look like in theory. Yeah, I'm going to just share my screen once again. So as you'll see the Anzac sign, I'm assuming you can all see that. Um, it will be in line and similar similar design to this. So that there's some consistency across the different communities. And we have just been going through a wayfinding engagement to create a new wayfinding strategy for the region for the region. And um, one of the topics that came up as part of the discussion was actually these community entrance signs. And so they might be slightly different than what you're seeing here, a little bit uh, a little bit of a refresh in what that looks like, um, but sticking kind of with the same theme and feel that we have for uh, these community signs here. So for example, color, uh, the wave theme, and um, the lettering. And I see now, Jim, your photo has come through. Thanks for sharing. I'm going to save that and in case my colleagues in engineering cannot save or download that picture, I will share with them later. OK, thank you, Jim. Are you just sharing one photo or are there other photos? Coming through as well. OK. OK. I see Kashif is typing in a response here. We'll see what Kashif has to say. OK, and so Kashif is wondering where this is located approximately, where that photo was taken. OK, so Jim is going to follow up with us a little later and Jim. OK, there you go. Kashif, there's an address there, 6214 Draper Road. Great, thank you. 
And Jim is pointing out Friday is our collection day, so you can see the issue that many people have on the Riverside past the S Bend. Thank you, Jim. That's helpful information. No, it looks like, uh, oh yeah, good. Kashif says this is very helpful. Thank you. All right, excellent. And any other comments, questions, concerns? Okay, so far I'm not hearing anything else, but if you do have any questions you think of later, please do feel free to reach us at the uh, participate email or you can contact us through Pulse. Just say you would like to uh, speak with somebody from the public engagement team and they'll get that information over to us. We're happy to help out. Um, or I do invite you to join in on the in-person session if you're able. That one is going to be on Wednesday evening at Jubilee on the first floor starting at six o'clock and um, yeah, I guess the only additional component to that night is the opportunity to go into council chamber and check out the newly renovated chamber and some of the indigenous artwork. Otherwise, it'll be basically the same agenda. And unless anyone has any additional questions or comments, I'm going to wind things down here and let you go on about your evening. Um, again, if there's anyone who wants to stick around, I'm happy to go back through some of the stuff you might have missed at the beginning of the meeting. Right. Thank you, Jim. And thank you to everyone else who joined us this evening. Much appreciated. Thank okay. you. So yeah, thank you, Mazar. Thank you for coming out this evening and helping us out. Thank you to everybody who came out to help out tonight. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support and your willingness to let me ask you random questions. <laughs> they are normal <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normal. <laughs> okay. Okay, folks, I'm going to wind things down now. Thank you, Tony, for coming out and for listening in on the conversation. And um, thank you, Coralie. Thank you, Cassandra, Joseph, Mazar, Kashif, as always. Have a good night, folks. Okay, same to you all. Good night. Thank you. Well done. Good thank night. you.